Hi, Scubreader here. Decided to take a couple seconds to tell you about the adventures I've been going in. Uh, I'm the proud owner, and I have been for a while, of a uh, Panasonic Toughbook, uh, model number CF25. Uh, it was released in the area 1996, so that puts it at 17 years old now, uh, getting closer to 18. So I've been asked by a few people, uh, like, what do you do with it? What, uh, what kind of fun do you have with it? And I love to use it for either retro gaming or retro applications. And I think that I enjoy uh, the tinkering part, the cleaning it up, making sure it works. Now, granted, the batteries for it are, uh, are both not good right now. But I'm looking at them, and I may end up taking some time to uh, get them reserviced, replace the cells in them, things like that. Now, going back to a computer from 1996, the big, the big item is how do you get information uh, from that machine uh, into the real world? Or even better, how do you get information from the real world into that machine? Now, it's okay, you know, because we've got the the Wikipedia page for it, for this Panasonic Wiki, right? The unit itself, you know, comes with features like a CD-ROM drive and a floppy disk drive. It also has PCM CIA slots, which you could put in, you know, an Ethernet adapter. Uh, it also has a serial connection. You could put a dial-up modem in it. Um, it doesn't have any wireless. and uh, It also doesn't have any USB on it. And even if it did, Back in 1996, the USB was like USB 1.0, USB 1.1. You know, Windows 95 was out, and Windows 95 didn't even come with USB support out of the box. It didn't come out until, I think it was U, uh, Windows 95 Release 2 or Release 3. So USB was, was not a thing until, you know, mainstream came around with Windows 98 that had some USB support. So what do I do to get you know, games and applications from the world in 2023 onto this CF25 uh, laptop. Well, I like to kind of dig through and look at all of the different buses, all the different mechanisms that are supported in the original device from, you know, 1996, or if it's another computer that you've been working with um, from, from, from that time. And then I take a look at what resources are still available in 2023 and then i try and find the fastest way to send information so um, taking a look through here uh you know the unit itself came with a 1.4 gigabyte hard drive or even at the most ex uh biggest it came with a two gig hard drive wow and you see here it came with windows 95 yeah but we've since moved beyond that um what uh, what I did was I inspected the machine and uh, I found out that uh, the processor that's in mine, mine's a Mach 3 and it's the Pentium MMX166. And I went in here and I took a look at the uh, different buses and speeds and, you know, I uh, looked it up and it has a North Bridge and that North Bridge is a P2X4. I'm like, you know, a lot of cross-referencing going on here, but... Looking at the P2X4, I know that it supports the IDE hard drive with a speed of Ultra DMA33. Well, so now I know what my options are. My options are serial, uh, floppy disk, CD-ROM drive, PCMCIA with possibly a 10 meg network card, um, and you know, taking taking the hard drive a, out and connecting it to a faster device so that uh, I can, you know, access that up to DMA33. So what I next do is go and run a Google search for a list of interface rates so that I can start taking a look at, you know, which one's going to be the fastest. And storage is like the key thing. There are, you can take a look at like uh, bus types and portables and peripherals and things like that. Um, but I can tell you that, you know, when you look at serial, serial rates are, you know, listed right in, in the spec, right? You can go 9,600 or 5,600 or 115 kilobits, uh, uh, 15 uh, kilobits per second. 
right? So that's not even a megabit per second. So let's start at the top and see what, what items we have. Like we have a CD-ROM controller, one times, you know, 1.1 megabits per second. Not bad. Um, we look up a little higher, we've got a high density floppy, right? This is the one that we would see in there, 1.2 or 1.44. It's only got a speed of 250 kilobits per second. That's, that's bad. Um, DVD controller, I know it doesn't have that, but still, that's 11. And hey, look, we, we take a look at our ATAs. ATA is your, your IDE controller, right? ATA to, uh, parallel connection. Um, it, of course, has grown into what more modern uh, computer users know as, you know, your ATA serial-based connection. Um, and then, of course, that's now since gone. Everybody uses NVMe as, uh, as a controller uh, type, and that's where you get your PCI speeds uh, for hard drives. But we take a look here. The ATA mode 0 is 26 megabits per second. 26 is good. And look a little. We've got our mode 2 and mode 3. Um, now, I know that when we're looking at our, uh, you know, Ultra DMA uh, 33 megabits uh, on a floppy disk controller, well, I know that 33 is a pretty darn good number. So, I feel like 33 megabits is going to be the fastest link that I can get uh, between, like, here it is right there, look at way down here. Ultra DMA ATA33, 264 megabits per second. That is perfect, right? And the people are like, well, where does the 33 come from? Well, the 33 comes from, you know, it being uh, 33 megabytes. That's big B. That's uh, 8 bits per byte um, uh, supported by that south bridge. So I can transfer data the quickest that way. So... The best solution for getting information onto this uh, CF25 Toughbook is to open it up, take out the hard drive, go and buy yourself off the internet, you know, be it Amazon or StarTech. StarTech I, I love because they they are uh, homed right in my uh, my home city of London, Ontario, Canada. So I got to give them a big shout out. But we're looking at a USB 3.0 to SATA IDE adapter, which supports 2.5 and 3.5 uh, external hard drives to USB. So I can plug this into a Windows 11, a Windows 10, Windows 7, Windows 8 machine, and it was gonna plug right into my laptop hard drive and let me copy files over. Now, when you start getting into the world of IDE hard drives, like some of the later laptop IDE hard drives, you're going to get some some pretty big storage capacities, right? You may be able to get yourself like a, you know, 40 or a 60 or an 80. I think they I've seen as high as a 320 gigabyte um, IDE hard drive, which is more than enough storage. Now, when I take a look at the hard drive I use with this uh, Toughbook, it's a 60 gigabyte hard drive, which is more than enough. If you think about it, a CD-ROM is like seven, 700 megs. So you could easily hold 60 CD-ROMs on there, That's more than enough. Now, my system, I've gone ahead and I've created different hard drive partitions so that, you know, they can handle 32-bit operating systems because a 32-bit op uh, operating system can't reference all 60 gigabytes at one time. And... Uh, I've partitioned it and I've set up files and folders and I grabbed one of these USB 3.0 to IDE adapters and I plugged it in and I plugged it into my Windows 10 computer and I copied uh, all the files and programs and installers uh, over, over to the hard drive and then I'm going to put it back in the laptop and it's going to take good care of me. Now uh, in my next video, uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to talk about all of the different applications that you know, are still around in 2023 that could be put on a Windows 95 or Windows 98 computer. Like prime example, I know there's a lot of jokes about it, is, you know, people used to use WinZip because there was no zip support in Windows 95 or 98 natively. And then, of course, you get the running joke of WinRAR and WinAce. Nobody ever paid for WinRAR, but it always said pay for it. Well, same thing goes for WinZip. Um, 
But in 2023, I like to use 7-Zip, right? It supports 7-Zips and TARs and all of the uh, ACEs and RARs and all of it out of the box. But version 9.2.0, I believe, works on Windows 95. So that's one of the applications that right away I'm going to install on my, uh, on my classic uh, computer. Uh, if you have any questions, you know, drop them in the comments below. Uh, be sure to like and share and uh, connect with me. Uh, you can find me uh, on YouTube. You can also find me at LinkedIn. Just search for Scott Bruder. There's like three or four of us. I'm the one that talks about technology the most. So connect with me. Uh, and if you're in uh, southwestern Ontario, Canada, and do technology, let me know. I'm always up for connecting for technical people. Uh, have yourself a great day. And thanks for watching.